Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, Hyundai has given us the opportunity to get an up close and personal in-depth look with the all new 2016 Hyundai Tucson. This particular example features the 7-speed dual-clutch transmission and 1.6-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder. We first took a look at that powertrain in my Sonata Eco review. This one's also a limited and stickers for around $31,110 including destination, but a full price breakdown can be found in the description box below. As always guys, this is going to be a detailed in-depth review of the Tucson. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. In addition to a standard smart key entry system, our ultimate package equipped limited tester is finished in Coliseum Gray and features the black perforated leather for the front and rear seats. To start, make sure you have the key fob within the interior, put your foot on the brake, then hit the dash mounted button to go. The Tucson features variable effort electrically assisted steering that now features improved steering feel this go around. Aluminum is primarily used for the rack, yielding greater precision and feedback through higher strength lightweight components. Hyundai also claims that friction for the steering system in general has been reduced by 20%. While I wouldn't go as far as to say it has sporty steering, it's still very accurate and precise. I personally prefer driving it in sport mode, which adds more resistance to the steering. It's routed through a three-spoke leather-wrapped multifunction steering wheel in our tester, featuring satin silver trim and grip bolsters at 10 and 2. The 2016 Tucson is the second Hyundai and the first in its segment to debut a new 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, or DCT, following its initial introduction in the 2015 Sonata Eco. It features a dual dry clutch with electric separation of the odd and even gears to help eliminate the interruption of torque transfer between shifts, delivering smoother and quicker acceleration compared to some of the other 6 and 9-speed automatics I've driven lately. As expected, gear changes occur pretty quick, not as fast as some high performance setups, after all Hyundai brands the DCT as Eco Shift, but it seems like a wonderful addition to the class. Thinking outside the box and taking something that I've always been known to be in high-end sports cars and applying it to boost economy. No paddle shifters are offered for the Tucson, but you can shift it manually via the gear selector by pulling it into drive and tipping it to the left, pushing it forward to upshift and pulling it back to downshift. There's a standard backup camera with adaptive guidance lines and a leather wrap shift knob and shift boot. Behind the gear selector you have three selectable drive modes, in addition to the downhill brake control which we'll cover later and parking sensors. By pressing the drive mode button you're able to cycle between eco, normal, and sport. This alters the programming for the engine, transmission, and steering. For example, while in sport the engine becomes more responsive to throttle inputs. The steering is firmed up, the transmission holds gears longer, and downshifts quicker. So let's go ahead and flip on the automatic LED headlamps, fog lamps, there's also LED daytime running lamps, and LED tail lamps. Your hazards are in the center console. Only the driver's side window is fully automatic. So let's go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime to let you know it's lost detection proximity key fob. This year, Hyundai has introduced the all-new third-generation Tucson for 2016, completely reinventing the vehicle from top to bottom. Ever since I first saw pictures and read the specifications, I've been really looking forward to testing this out. After spending a week with it, I firmly believe this is one of the most modern and advanced offerings in the rapidly growing and highly competitive compact crossover segment. It's available in four trim levels, SE, Eco, Sport, and Limited, competing against the Ford Escape, Mazda CX-5, Jeep Cherokee, Nissan Rogue, Honda CR-V, and Toyota RAV4. We recently checked out the Rogue and I've had some experience with the Cherokee and Escape. Compared to some of the more value-oriented vehicles in the segment to those that offer more sporty characteristics, the Tucson seems to be somewhat of a middle ground, offering a little of both. The base SE begins at $22,700, while the Limited begins at $29,900. All-wheel drive is a $1,400 option and is available on all trim levels. 
If you plan to go all out with an all-wheel drive limited, equipped with the ultimate package, you'll easily hit 35 grand. That's not cheap by any means, but it's right along the lines of what you'd expect to see from the competition. The Tucson offers a lot to customers in this class, not just from a value standpoint, but from its refined road manners, edgy styling, and innovation. The most obvious change outside is the adoption of Fluidic Sculpture 2.0, an updated variant of Hyundai's corporate design language that was first applied to the redesigned 2015 Genesis. Tucked, curved, and angled in all the right places, the new styling gives the Tucson a much more exciting, dynamic, and overall premium look than you'd expect to see out of this class, much less utilitarian this go around. The front end is dominated by a bold hexagonal grille and LED accented headlamps. Twin projector LED headlamps are standard on the Limited, but our tester has the upgraded HIDs that rotate with the steering wheel a part of the Ultimate package. In general, LEDs are used all over the vehicle in various aspects to provide bright, modern lighting. The Limited adds some tasteful chrome to the grille and door handles. The new Tucson brings a much more aggressive and well thought out form that looks more planted and well balanced proportionally. I really like the flared wheel arches and rugged cladding in the lower faces and side sills. Comparing dimensions, the Tucson is shorter, wider, and lower than many of its competitors, all while squeezing in a relatively long wheelbase for improved interior space. Underneath the sheet metal is a redesigned steel unibody that's about 48% stiffer for enhanced ride quality and driving dynamics. 51% of the new structure is formed using high strength steel compared to its predecessor which only used about 18%. More advanced forming tactics around the passenger compartment, including hot stamping, was used to increase torsional rigidity and improve crash safety. It's also the first Tucson to use structural adhesives in the building process to add strength and even more rigidity. Compared to its predecessor, the wheelbase and overall length have been increased by 1.2 inches and 3 inches respectively. It's wider by 1.1 inches and lower in height by 0.4 inches. The front and rear overhangs have been lengthened proportionally, 1.5 inches and 0.2 inches respectively. The Tucson's available all-wheel drive system, not equipped on our tester, is sourced from Magna and includes a driver selectable all-wheel drive lock function that splits the torque 50-50 between the front and rear wheels. Normally, the all-wheel drive system sends torque to the rear wheels as necessary, in other words, it's a front bias system. An integrated torque vectoring system known as active cornering control applies the brake to the inside rear wheel, effectively transferring more torque to the outer wheel. This helps reduce understeer when taking a sharp corner. Aerodynamic improvements include a new lip spoiler for the front bumper, a straighter A-pillar, new side trim to bridge the C-pillar and roof spoiler, in addition to underbody covers. The latter also reduces the amount of noise that enters the cabin, but we'll talk about that more in just a bit. Drag coefficient has therefore been improved to .33 compared to .35 of its predecessor. The Tucson is available with two different alloy wheel designs. Standard on the SE and Eco are a set of silver painted 17 by 7 inch wheels, but with the Sport and Limited you get a larger set of 19 by 7 and a half inch alloys. Combining a machine face with black painted pockets, they sort of remind me of the wheels on the new Volkswagen GTI. I love the stance they give the Tucson, they really fill out the wheel wells without being too big. They're wrapped in lower profile 245-45 all season tires. All Tucsons use the same braking system, including 12-inch internally ventilated front discs and 11.9-inch solid rear discs. Four-channel four-sensor electronic brake force distribution and stability control come standard alongside ABS, hill start assist, and downhill brake control. Hyundai claims the Tucson can stop from 60 miles an hour in around 130 feet. Underneath, the Tucson is supported by a fully updated independent suspension with coilover shocks at each corner. When comparing last year's model, the overall suspension stiffness has been up by 20% for 2016. In front, you'll find a McPherson strut setup with a 24.7mm hollow stabilizer bar. At the rear is a multi-link setup that now uses dual lower arms for both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive models, in addition to a 23mm hollow stabilizer bar. The extra arm helps distribute lateral forces more effectively, subsequently improving stability and handling. The control arms have also been lengthened to minimize camber and toe changes throughout the suspension's range of travel, which has also been increased to better absorb impacts. New suspension bushings use a higher damping synthetic rubber material that are stiffer by 30% which also helps smooth out the ride. All these changes become apparent when you hit the road. Impacts are absorbed without transferring harsh feedback to the interior. It feels solid, especially when encountering rough pavement. It's a much more refined driving experience to its predecessor and very competitive for the class. Overall length is 176.2 inches, width is 72.8 inches excluding the mirrors, and height is 65 inches with the roof rails. Wheelbase is 105.1 inches, while total curb weight for our tester is between like 3,300 and 3,500 pounds. 
Like its predecessor, Hyundai offers the Tucson with two engine options. A direct injected 2 liter four cylinder continues to provide power to the entry model. It develops 164 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque, achieving up to 23 miles to a gallon in the city and 31 on the highway. The most important change, though, is the availability of a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder that replaces the previously offered naturally aspirated 2.4 liter four cylinder. Part of the new Gamma engine family is standard on the Eco, Sport, and Limited. Constructed using an aluminum block and head, the 1.6 also features dual overhead cams, dual continuous variable valve timing, four valves per cylinder, direct fuel injection, and a compression ratio of 10 to 1. Maximum engine speed peaks around 6,500 RPM. It develops 175 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 195 pound-feet of torque between 1,500 and 4,500 RPM. Up to 16 PSI boost is delivered via a single twin-scroll turbocharger for snappy, more responsive acceleration. I'd estimate our tester can hit 60 miles an hour between 7.5 and, and 8 seconds. Top speed is probably limited around 120 miles an hour. Compared to the 2.4, the 1.6 is down by 7 horsepower but benefits from an additional 17 pound feet of torque. I first got a taste of this innovative powertrain when I tested out the 2015 Sonata Eco earlier this year. The dual clutch 7 speed transmission is a segment first like we talked about earlier and really one of my favorite things about this setup. Combined with an engine that develops impressive power and low end torque for its size and you get a crossover that strikes a pretty awesome balance between performance and fuel economy that's also fun to drive. Inside the 1.6 features piston cooling oil jets and a new water jacket insert to cool the upper level of the cylinder block. This leads to improved temperature management, leaner air fuel mixtures, and greater efficiency. The Tucson also gets a larger 16.4 gallon fuel tank this year and is able to run on regular and leaded fuel regardless of the engine. The EPA rates our front wheel drive tester between 25 miles to a gallon in the city and 30 highway. That's a 4 mile improvement in the city rating compared to the previous 2.4 liter. I averaged around 27 miles to a gallon during my week of driving. Mileage does drop slightly when opting for all wheel drive. The redesigned interior should be more than enough to impress shoppers in this class. It combines excellent build quality, a generous list of standard and available features, and a more upscale and modern environment. The cabin feels roomier and features excellent ergonomics. It's easy to see that the quality of materials and even the controls for that matter have improved dramatically. When you hit the road, you'll also notice there's been a significant increase in sound deadening. Throughout there's more soft touch material across the doors and dash, creating a more premium feeling environment. In addition to available stitch portions, this example features a small soft touch pad to the left of the central tunnel to rest your knee on, increasing comfort for long trips. All of your power accessories can be found in the door with plenty of storage below. The seats in our Ultimate Package Tester feature full power adjustment up front including two-way adjustable lumbar for the driver. The leather is perforated across the middle which provides the necessary ventilation for the heating and cooling functions. The back seats are also heated but we'll talk about that more later in the video. The seats are pretty comfortable overall and provide good lateral and lower back support. The headrests and seatbelts are adjustable. Available LED illumination keeps things super bright at night. There's aluminum door sill entry guards and a manual tilt telescoping steering wheel. There aren't any knee airbags, but there's a host of advanced safety tech available, including automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, and lane change assist. Adaptive cruise control is not offered. Again, the upper portion of the dash is wrapped in soft touch material with the stitched portions, and you have the availability of a full panoramic glass roof. Checking out the passenger portion, you have the same power adjustments as the driver's seat, but you don't have the adjustable lumbar like I talked about a second ago. The other biggest difference is on the passenger side portion of the central tunnel, you don't have that padded portion, but a small storage tray. Again, everything is easily accessible from the infotainment system to the climate controls. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. We'll go ahead and shut her up.
Our tester is fitted with the powerful 405 watt audio system with 8 speakers and an 8 inch LCD touchscreen infotainment system. It combines Sirius XM satellite radio, AM, FM, HD radio, hands free Bluetooth technology and all of your iPod auxiliary USB integration. Very flexible. My wife's 2015 Kia Soul Exclaim actually has this identical infotainment system and it's very easy to use, very intuitive, there's not much lag between the screens and you'll pick up on it pretty quickly. The home menu shows you a snapshot of various things like navigation, multimedia, but it's also customizable from what I remember so you can place different things if you didn't want to see your media for example. It has other smartphone type technologies such as scrolling, swiping, pinching, and you can also customize various menus a little bit further to icons that you will use the most. I didn't play around with the app features quite as much and I believe you can actually download some additional apps. You have things like SiriusXM data with weather, traffic, sports updates, fuel prices, but Pandora Internet Radio, Yelp, SoundHound. And with the updated Blue Link system, in addition to roadside assistance, you also have remote capability to lock and unlock the vehicle, remote start it, control the lights, and more. There's so many cool features tied in with Blue Link that it would take just forever to list it all in the video. So for a complete list of what it all entails, see the description box below. Side curtain airbags, grip handles up top, and padded visors. Inside there's a little card holder, a vanity mirror, and illumination. The auto dimming rear view mirror has three position garage home link to the right and a compass. To the left you have your blue link controls including roadside assistance, I guess similar in concept to OnStar. In the top stack you have microphones for your hands free bluetooth telephone, interior illumination, LED reading lamps, and sunglass storage. Not to mention the controls for the fully automatic sunroof. Nice attention to detail with the stitched pattern material across the speedometer and instrument panel. Continuing down the center console, the limited features a standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control system. One touch automatic, fan speed, different zones, front and rear defrost, recycling, vent, all that good stuff through an air filtration system. There's also three stage heated and ventilated seats for the front occupants and heated rear seats. More stitched pattern material right here where your knee goes. Small storage tray, two 12 volt power outlets, an auxiliary, and a USB port. Continuing on back, there's a little bit of storage in the console, here and here, in addition to two cup holders. In the back, you have a padded center console with a nice size storage well. As far as the steering wheel on the right hand side, you have your cruise control and driver information system, and to mention your radio controls, hands free telephone, and voice commands. Please say a command. Help. Here are some available commands. Please say or select one. Exiting voice recognition. So the driver info system is pretty nice. It's all routed through this main button right here that goes between the different menus and this up and down arrow to go within the different sub menus. So in this one, for example, fuel, instantaneous fuel data, trip computers, digital speed readout. You hit the menu button, we go to navigation, your lane departure warning system, audio, service intervals, and various customizable options. But what's also pretty cool is that, for example, if you turn the wipers on, it shows you that they're on. Same thing for the lights, kind of giving you a little heads up display, so to speak. It does that for a variety of different things, but that's just an example. I know the parking sensors also show up in that screen. The instrument system is also pretty simple. You have your tachometer, speedometer, vehicle temperature, and fuel, very clean. In a nutshell though, that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And check out the back seat room and amenities. So the Tucson has quite a nice back seat. There's a lot of room back here. The materials feel nice and it's pretty well appointed. Our tester actually has two stage heated rear seats, but it's only on the bottom cushion. As far as interior space, I'm 5'10 with a comfortable seating position for myself in front. I probably have at least 5 inches or so of leg space, a couple inches of head space where the headliner ends right here, but 
probably two, two and a half inches more with the panoramic glass roof. Obviously, there's a lot more wiggle room with that option. And it's also nice. It, it allows so much natural light to come in here. It's, it's, it's beautiful. We have a 2015 Kia Soul, um, my wife and I, and we also have a panoramic glass roof. It's definitely a nice touch. You have LED lights back here, grip handles up top, a coat hook on the uh, driver's side portion, and two additional coat hooks on the B pillars. But, like I said, build quality back here is just as nice as the front. I mean, all the panels feel nice and solid, very tight. Just like the front, you have the soft touch plastics across the upper door panels, the middle portion, and the armrest to keep everything nice and plushy on that side. The seats themselves are also quite comfortable. At first, they seem a little bit firm, but there's a good amount of padding. Not a whole lot in lateral support, but it fits my body pretty well, including um, some extra lower back support. One thing I do really like as well, in addition to being able to fold these seats flat, it's a 60-40 split design so you can load up cargo to the front, which I'll talk about that when we get to the trunk portion. If you grab the lever on the, um, the outer portion of the seat right here they also recline so this is its furthest forward position I don't know why you would want to sit this far forward but look how far back it rakes I mean it's it's a lot it's probably the most I've seen in a crossover lately I mean you're just in a lounge chair at this point <laughs> it's awesome and you can pull down this armrest right here which is also wrapped in leather nice and padded there's two cup holders um, but yeah, it's a very, very comfortable environment. So you can sit three people back here. All the headrests are adjustable. There's an extra seat belt. The center console doesn't intrude too much. There's a little drivetrain hump, but it's not too high. So I think you could probably sit three full-size adults back here. It's definitely worth checking out. I know me sitting in the middle, if I had two more people my size sitting next to me, it'd be, it'd be pretty, pretty fine. There would be a little bit of a constraint as far as shoulder space, I imagine, but not too bad overall. So, let's go and check out cargo space. Available on the Tucson is this smart power operating tailgate. Kind of like Ford's system where you walk behind it, kick your foot underneath the bumper and it'll open it up without having to touch anything. The Tucson does the same thing, only it just recognizes the key fob and you stand behind it. No foot action necessary. You also have to stand behind it for a few seconds so you don't have to worry about it opening up when you just walk by the vehicle. I really like it a lot, it's very convenient, especially when you're carrying heavy items. Hyundai claims the rear opening has been enlarged in every direction, increasing the amount of items you can haul. There's an optional cargo privacy cover you can pull in and it comes out really easily. In total, there's 31 cubic feet behind the rear seat, up from 25.7 cubic feet of its predecessor. Fold everything down you have a maximum of 61.9 cubic feet of storage. There's cargo tie-downs, child seat anchors on the back of the rear seat, a 12 volt power outlet, and illumination. Fold up the trunk floor and it reveals your temporary spare tire and jacking equipment. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new 2016 Hyundai Tucson. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.